Hey guys, and welcome back to Deep Fear. Now, when we last left off, we were trying to get ourselves a fancy, fantabulous uh, mechanized suit to walk across the bottom of the ocean so we can get to the power complex, stop from meltdown. However, we can't uh, get into a fantabulous metal big gym suit to walk across the ocean floor because there's no oxygen tank. You can't go get the oxygen tank because there's a big hole in the... Uh, wall of the room that has a big oxygen tank so now we have to go all the way back to the navy area to find a special gun so we can seal up the hole okay let's just let's just let's just get on with it shall we okay i mean how hard can it possibly be eh 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 uh, right okay um Hang on a minute. Right, yeah, we got to go all the way. Yeah, because Danny's waiting for us now, isn't he? In the back of the dock. Uh, okay, right. So we need to go back through the docking area. Which, actually, you know, it's not that far away from what I can remember, I think. So let's get a little wiggle on. We're all topped up with everything. That's fine. Our health is almost full, but, you know. Enemies don't really ever get the chance to get close to us, so... Yeah, not that I'm tooting my own horn or anything. But a couple of blasts from the good old shotgun do generally seem to keep uh, most enemies away. Uh, now... Um, so we need to go back to the CCD area, don't we? Which was down the elevator, I think, to a level two. I think that's the CCD area. Well, I suppose if we're right here by the storage, we might as well load up on shotgun shells. Not that we're, you know, running on empty or anything like that. Now, let's have a look. Let's grab some of these. There we go. Nice. So, I'm I'm thinking about uh, getting a completely modded uh, one of each system, basically. Uh, I think I'm working on the GameCube at the moment. And after I've got my GameCube sorted... Uh, I think we need to go to floor two. I think I'm going to try and start working towards a fully modded Sega Saturn. One that I can just dump ROMs directly onto the system. Now, this is probably a pipe dream. I mean, I was looking at the ultimate Dreamcast the other day that has every single upgrade imaginable for the system. Yeah, 600 quid. To do everything. 600 pounds. That's a lot of money. When you could just use an emulator. But the trouble with the emulators is, as good as they are, and they are excellent, they're um, not 100%. There's a couple of Dreamcast games that aren't compatible with Redream, unfortunately. And when I say there's a couple, I literally mean there's a couple. There's like two. It's Fur Fighters and something else. I mean, I could do the PlayStation 2 version of Fur Fighters, I suppose, but who would want to do that? Um, right. Now, actually, the Fur Fighters on the PlayStation 2 has a lot of interesting differences over the Dreamcast version. Uh, now, we want to... Ah, it's downstairs, isn't it? We need to go. We're going through the docking area. Gee, there's a, there's a lot of elevators in this game. I'm noticing that. There really is a lot of elevators. Jeez. Now. So where was the docking area? Imagine if... Uh, is that... Yes. Imagine if in Resident Evil or Silent Hill, uh, or even Fatal Frame, you could just...
get unlimited amounts of health and the best ammunition. Ooh, hello. I mean, look, he had his chance to attack. He really did. But it just didn't happen for him. I feel bad for him. I do, you know? I still don't know what wiped out all the Navy SEALs. They just died. <laughs> it couldn't have been the normal generic... Well, they did have SMGs though, didn't they? So, maybe. Now, it feels to me that there is, there really is a very distinct lack of enemies in this game. I mean, you get one or two pop up every now and again, sure, but you really don't get too many. Now, where would our friend be? Do we don't want to go back to the sea farm area. Uh, I guess the admin, oh, the admin room. Oh, okay. <laughs> cut scene to see. You wait. Get on the lift when I give the signal from the control room. Here, I'll give you this. Oh, dear. The Navy area ID card key. You'll need this for the Navy area. I owe you one. Ooh. Okay. Boopy. All this to get a damn glue gun, basically. Unbelievable. You've obtained, yeah, we know we've obtained the level two. Oh, what's that? Oh, right, that just takes the lift upstairs, I suppose. Um, right, so what have we got? Go oh. Okay. That's the storage room. So where are we going then? Um So the there has to be one of these doors locked up. Uh okay. Well, let's try the elevator, I suppose. I can't remember where we went here. Oh, nice. Um, I mean, I guess we'll save the game. <laughs> There's not a lot of point, but... Uh, sure? We'll save the game? Question mark? Let's save it here, like, in the system memory. See if that actually makes much of a difference. Okay. So, what is that? I guess that's to the passageway. Yes, that is the passageway. Aha! I am starting to learn how to read these maps. Kind of. Ooh! I've got a monster. Hello. Yeah. Ooh, he hit me. Son of a... Bitch hit me. Oh, I suppose it's time to eat one of our med kits. Wow, we have seven emergency aid kits. Cool. Yeah, that pretty much tops us right back up anyway. Uh, any more? See, it wouldn't, like... It wouldn't be so bad if, let's check out floor two. Enemies uh, were tougher, for instance. Maybe that could be fun. There's few enemies, but they're pretty tough. But yeah, that doesn't seem to really happen either. Oh, hello. I don't know what that, oh. These. Not really sure what that is. 
some kind of frog? I mean, it doesn't matter because they die in one shot. So, you know. Um, oh, this is all new. Well, kind of. Can we go in that door? Apparently there's a door back here we haven't been in. Ah, the refrigerator. Yes, I remember you. Couldn't get inside earlier. We can't get inside now. All right. The e-pool. Hmm. Oh, hello. Oh, I remember these little dog things. Yeah. They're quite tough, if I remember. Oh, you know, I could also be wrong about that. Uh, you know. Well, let's put that away. Yeah, it wasn't this where Matey Boy died. I think so. Two enemies in that close proximity, though. Ah, okay, cool. Right, so this is where we need to use... Let's do that. A let's -a go. <gasps> Shouldn't say that around a Sega license game, should we? Hey! I really like it when you announce your presence when you're miles away. They really do look kind of like tyrants. I will say I like the enemy design. I actually am very fond of the enemy design. Nothing else? It really does give me a T-Abyss kind of vibe. Uh, okay, where's this ladder go then? Goes up, apparently. What do we have here? Got another passageway, got a data library, we've got a laboratory. Well, I mean, let's go up the ladder first, I suppose. Needs to an oh oh something's got some bad gas. Not sure what that is. Oh, some kind of weird insect guy. Doesn't appear to be much tougher than anything else. Well, maybe a little bit. Ooh. Little bit stronger than the other things. But, you know, nothing to write home about. First aid kit. Uh, might as well eat two of those, I guess. There's a somewhat healthy enemy variety in this game. Ooh. It's a big air duct. I can barely hear the air flowing. That will be why we're dying. Through oxygen poisoning. So apparently we've got a barracks down here. Let's check that out. Barracks. Wonder what's in here. No enemies. Be nice if there's like some shotguns. Ooh. Hello. A soldier's letter. Dearest Kate, I'm sorry, but the honeymoon will have to wait for a while. The cargo Sea Fox brought over is top secret, and it's my duty to guard it. It's so stupid. Who would come all the way down here to the bottom of the ocean to steal something like this? It's always the new guy who gets jobs like this. It's not fair. You know, I should have been long gone from this underwater prison by now, but I hope you understand. I'm dying to see you. Bye. P.S. When I get back to the top, let's go to an exotic beach and have tequila sunrises in the sun. That sounds lovely. 
Uh, but you're dead, dude, so... Whoa! Resuscitation pack. Very nice. And you know, we might as well completely top off our health whilst we're here. Right, anything else? Ooh, oh! There's a gum gun, I guess. Sweet. Well, that was easy. He's already dead. Yep. Sorry, dude. Now, we're kind of running through our ammo here. Which is problematic. Right, see if there's anything else popping its ugly ass head up here. Uh, oh, I guess we're just going to go back down. Right, one second, guys. Got a phone call. Okay, right, let's go back down, I guess. Climb down. I guess we can't go up this one, even though there's a ladder going up to the top for some reason. Okay, let's go down. Right, so finally got my missing cat photo uh, pictures posters. That's the one all printed up. I'm going to go hand those out with the missus in a minute. Um, right. Okay, can we go through here? We can. Is this the way I was thinking of? Uh, yeah, okay. What's this way, then? Come on, dude. Yeah, I mean, I guess they could have made these en- Oh, God. These enemies a little bit quicker or something. But, uh, not really much of a threat, are they? Right, let's put that back. And you might be able to hear Milo behind me. He's currently uh, in... Oh, data library. He's currently in my uh, blank paper tray on top of my printer, rolling around, doing donuts. Ooh. Ooh, VTR1. Okay. How come we haven't explored this area ever yet? It's a big air duct. I smell some sort of chemicals. Yeah. Is this... Ooh, you've obtained the Mercury Project Brief. On October 1957, the Soviet Union succeeded in launching the first man-made satellite, Sputnik 1. Americans were astounded by this event. This later became known as the Sputnik Shock. In August of 1958, the Eisenhower administration established a new space investigation organization and renamed it NASA. <gasps> National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The Mercury Project. The Mercury Project had three main purposes. One, to have manned space a manned space pod in Earth's orbit. Two, to bring the pod and its crew safely back to Earth. Three, to investigate what sort of effects this new flight environment has on humans. However, in order to successfully carry out this plan, researchers had to study the natures of extreme acceleration and deacceleration, space radiation, extreme temperatures and sound, weightlessness, claustrophobia, and much more. Before actually launching humans into space, NASA used hamsters, pigs, chimpanzees, dogs, and other animals as tests. These subjects are thought to have been continued until the Mercury, Mercury project ended. Yeah, I was reading about some of those tests not that long ago, especially what the Russians did by sending... I um, can't remember the dog's name now. Um, but yeah, the first dog into space. Uh, and, you know, she's quite often, um, they talk about these experiments, but what they leave out is the horrific end <laughs> that these animals actually, uh, suffered. And, uh, they were horrific. Ooh, the airlock is damaged and you can't go in. Okay. Yeah, these were very horrific. I mean, the dog that the Russians sent up, uh, there's loads of mixed um, reports on what happened to her, whether she actually froze or burn up in the atmosphere uh, 
then climb down there. I wonder where that goes. Whether she asphyxiated. Um, but she would have been terrified all the way up and all the way down. Now, I'm not this, I'm not actually having to get the rations here. The, these experiments are done by everybody. But, yeah, it's just the cost sometimes that we think when, that the animals have had to endure in a manner of science. It's the engine room. The door is locked. It says no trespassing. Okay. Well, I think this area is fully explored now. Yeah, I always find that pretty, pretty terrible. You know, we've got entire prisons full of murderers, you know, rapists, pedophiles, and all that lot. And we send poor animals up. But hey, never mind, I guess. All right, anyway, um, let's have a look. Hmm. So, oh, yeah, we need to turn around and go the other way, don't we? Of course we do. I knew that. What does this do? Does this do anything? Nope. It's just a red valve. See, if that if this was Resident Evil, that valve handle would be in our pocket. Probably would have had to use it 36 times by now as well. Okay. Now, let's have a look. I get is this the ladder? Yes, it is, but we don't want to go up that ladder, do we? We want to go back around, I think. Back around this way. The confusing corridors are numerous and many. Now, one thing I think uh, goes against this game as well is the environments. Now, I I know there's there's not really a lot they could do because it's the setting of the game, but it's very very um, samey. It's the same color palette. It's the same kind of steel, metal, bare construction, um, and yeah, I mean that's just the nature of what it is. The where we are. So, I don't really blame them for that, but I guess they could have mixed it up a bit with a bit more, like, underwater sections or something. I guess they did mix it up a little bit by having lots of cutscenes. And there are lots of cutscenes. And for their time especially, they are very impressive. I mean, I think it's safe to say that the uh, playback for the cutscenes not as crispy as something as what you'd find on the PlayStation uh, One, but it's perfectly serviceable. So I guess we're going to go back up this elevator, and that's the interesting thing with the Sega Saturn. It was designed to be this 2D powerhouse. Um, Everybody else in the industry bet the farm on 3D graphics. Sega, being idiots, bet the farm on incredibly detailed, uh, mind-bending 2D graphics. Um, and then when they saw which way the industry was going, they had a little bit of a panic. And ah, let's go to the storage. We need some ammo. Uh, and decided to shoehorn loads of extra processors and chips and things into the satin to make it um, perform 3D and more adequately. And it actually succeeded, kind of. They made a impressively powerful system, which arguably, if used correctly, was more impressive, in theory, than the PlayStation. Oh, nice. The only trouble with it, it was more expensive than the PlayStation. Um, it had fewer games than the PlayStation. And unfortunately, the PlayStation was relatively easy to program for, whereas the Sega Saturn was an absolute nightmare. Even Sega themselves struggled to develop for the system. Um, you know. Everything that could go did go wrong for the Saturn, which is a shame. Uh, 
and that's why the Dreamcast was very different. It was uh, very easy to program for. Designed around for the time, cutting edge 3D graphics. But unfortunately, the damage had already been done. Okay, let's go. And old Sega, the experts of putting their own foot in their mouth. Okay, so now we've got that. Do we have to go see our friend again? Yo, 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 where are we off to now? See, it always makes you think you've got to go miles, but actually that wasn't that far away. Now, hurry, aren't we near meltdown? Aren't we near the meltdown? We are actually near to the meltdown, yes, it's not that far away. Uh, as for how much time we have, I don't know, Chief. Your guess is as good as mine. Okay, so I'm guessing this game is going to end with us escaping with everybody. Alright, that's back to the sea farm area. Is it the sea farm that we want to go through? Need to remember now. There's my. I've got some maps and stuff drawn up here that I've. I think are better, to be honest. Um. Yeah, we want to go back to the apartment area. Through the yeah, we go through the CCT area, don't we? I think. Yes, we can. Okay. Cool. Right, let's go back to the sea farm area. I think all of these areas are kind of linked up. Anyway. In a very kind of roundabout way. Right, so we're now here. Uh... Docking area. Yeah, I think we can get to where we need to go through the docking area, I think. Question mark. B2? It's on B2. Seabed tunnel. Oh, right. Hang on. No, we can't go through there. That's where that broken um, bit is, isn't it? And that's Sharon's room. God damn it. I think I have gone the wrong way. Which wouldn't be a surprise, you know, that's fairly standard for me. Sea farm, yeah, we don't want to go through there. We have got plenty of ammo. Yeah, let's just go back to the docking area. Sod it. I've made a mistake. A grievous mistake. A costly mistake. Uh, now, we won't go to the sea farm area. We shall go to... Let's go to the... Yeah. The elevator. Now hurry, he says. Surely you know your way around this place, he says. Ha! 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 Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, no. Actually, no. No, I don't. I should know my way around this area. This is where we need to be.
Now, what's interesting is we can actually skip these cutscenes by pushing start, but obviously they're loading screens, so it doesn't actually speed anything up. Ah, <sighs> optical disk drives, eh? Right, so, now... Yes. Don't want to go to the docking area, do we? No, the docking area is where we've just come from, so we want to go up. Into that elevator. Yeah. Kind of, I think. Oh, hello. Did not expect to see you guys in here. Right, empty that shotgun into this thing's gullet. Well, you missed me. You had one chance, dude. One chance. You blew it. Storage area. Actually, let's go to the storage area, because... Oh my, we're out of time. Ah, there goes, uh... Finishing this game, I suppose. <laughs> this game's going to go on for a while, I think. It's actually a very long game. At least it feels like a very long game, I should say. Right. Bullets. Okay, cool. Now, let's... Uh, we don't need to re... Oh, right, yeah, we can't actually save our game on that thing. But that's okay. Because we have the power of save states. We're going to save that. We're going to save... On that one as well. Right, so that's the start of this video. Yeah, and there's some weirdness with these save states as well. Like... Right, so if I push 1, 1 selects save state... Two. Two doesn't select anything. Three selects save state three. Four selects four. Five is five. Six is six. Seven, eight, nine. Zero is ten. So save state one. Oh, I see. You can actually use the plus and minus keys to just scroll through them like that. So there's actually no way of um, accessing save state 1 with the number keys. Because it does something else. I can't tell you what it does. It doesn't tell you there what it does either. Now, there's actually a lot more to this um, emulator than just this. There's, there's quite a lot more, apparently. Uh, what do we have here? So we can actually configure buttons. <sighs> Ooh. Interesting. And we can rewind. Also interesting. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So we're going to go to save state one. The more I play with this emulator, the more I actually like it. I'm going to be honest. It's very simple, uh, but it does work. Yeah. <laughs> but its simplicity is a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for watching and listening to me ramble like a mad fool. When we come back, well, I guess we're going to use this bloody gum gun and uh, get into a big diving suit thing, which I'm actually kind of looking forward to. So, till then, guys. Thanks for watching.